So um, yeah, next up we have pandas. So pandas builds on the NumPy things. So uh, under the hood, pandas is using NumPy and it lets you do a lot more high level operations. So here we have um, my colleagues who can introduce themselves and take it away. All right. Um, hello, I am uh, Marijn van Vliet and I'm a research fellow at Aalto University. And well, I use Python and I also use Pandas a lot for my research, which is in neuroscience. And uh, with me co-teaching uh, today, we have uh, Jarno. Hey. What would you like to say? Um, so you've all seen me already today. Um, yeah. Hey, again. That's great. Um, so, um, Brian, can you tell me what is Pandas? Yes, that's, uh, let's, let's dive right in. So, um, Pandas, what you need to know about this is that it's all about tables. So, up to now, we've been mostly working with NumPy. And NumPy really deals with these huge grids, uniform grids of numbers. And that's the kind of data that you, that you will get out of a, some measurement device, like a telescope or a large hadron collider or something, fields of numbers. Pandas is what you use when you have the sort of data that is more like the data you get from a database. For example, a list of all the books in a library or the passenger manifesto of uh, a large passenger ship, as we will see. And I think the best way to show what Pandas is and what it does is just to load up some data and look at it a little bit through the eyes of Pandas. So I'm gonna ask Jarno now to, uh, yeah, to get, to get a notebook ready. Okay. You're of course free to follow along everyone watching or just watch Jarno. So we get some data um, into pandas. So maybe first okay, import yeah. pandas. Yeah, so the first thing I'll do is import pandas yeah. as PD, I guess that's yeah. the standard name. Yeah, that's what people usually use. Just like like, like NP for NumPy, uh, pandas is PD. Yeah. Um, and let's, let's load some data. And uh, pandas is very good with handling CSV data, comma separated values. And it can even read data just by putting a URL in there. So this is what is shown here in the lecture notes below. We just have the, U the CSV file as a URL there. And so this is a, um, a file that, is, or an, a URL that actually points to a CSV file online. Yeah. And then I just type, um, so you just use one of Panda's many data import functions. And this one so is called- So let's do read CSV for read. So we have read CSV file and the yeah. file is called Titanic. So I'm calling it Titanic here. Okay. Oh, oops. I need to put URL as a parameter and see what happens. Yeah. Now it's okay. in Titanic. Now I have Please something called data. Titanic. Should I just take a look? Yeah, just, just type it in and let's see. So the, the, the first thing you will notice is that Jupyter Notebooks know how to show these pandas tables really pretty. So Jupyter Notebook will render this as an HTML table. When you are in a, in a text console, you will get a nice text rendering of it. Um, but here inside the browser, we, we get a nice HTML rendering. And, and here you see a table. So pandas calls this a data frame. So maybe I should also start calling it a data frame, um, but it is a table. Um, and this data frame, uh, so you, you see this is the, pan uh, the, the passenger list of everyone who was on board the Titanic when, uh, when it sank on its only journey. And um, so what I was saying about num NumPy re really being about grids of numbers, you, you see that with this data, we don't only have numbers, we also have strings and we have well, if integers and floats and maybe the category data, it's, it's all in there. Um, so the way this is organized um, now is in, uh, in this data frame um, is that this is a, a collection of columns. And, and basically what Pandas provides is a huge amount of tools to manipulate this data, to select this data and 
and co compute all kinds of stuff with this data. Um, for uh, for example, we can uh, um, well we, we can print some summary statistics. Would you like to try that, uh, Yarnam? So. Say we want to get a quick overview of this data, and um, let's use the describe method of this. So okay. So describe. Yeah. Um, Titanic dot describe. Okay. Let's see what that does. So. All oh, right. That's a lot of things. Yeah. So what do you see, Yarno? Well, um, there's 891 passengers, but 891 survived. That doesn't seem right. No. Well, it's the count. It's so the we number have... of items in each. So some of these have missing values, age, for hmm. example, but survive doesn't. Yeah, we have all the numbers, uh, all the data for survive, but not, not the age for every passenger. Then we have the mean. Yeah. Uh, mean passenger ID, I guess it's not that um, no. meaningful. The mean, but the mean survived is maybe. Survived is actually, yeah, that is an interesting number. It's the uh, survival rate yeah. on the ship. Um, 30 I mean age survive, might yeah. be interesting. Then there is standard deviation. Um, yeah, and all kinds of other things. Minimum, right? Okay, minimums. Um, oh, what do you call this in English? Um, the percentiles. Percentiles, okay. Yeah. And maximum, of course. Um, yeah. yeah. Maximum age it, is 80. And you see that it, it, it computes these values for all the columns. And yeah. Pandas is a lot about columns. So when you have a data frame in Pandas, a data frame is really is just a collection of columns. So, so these are kind of individual entries of data, individual people. And then these yeah. columns are what data there actually is for all of these people. Yes. Yeah. Each row here is a single passenger, and each column tells us something about this passenger. And we can get... Um, yeah, we can and we can do all kinds of like com more complicated data queries on this. Uh, for example, you can you can try two that are uh, that are listed here below. Well, let's try one. Um, for example, can we um, can we compute for all the people who survived and all the people who did not survive? So let's let's split the data into survive yeah, yeah. and not survive, um, and compute the mean age of them. So okay, so the first thing we want to do is get. Who survived? Oh, yeah, we, we want to get the group of people who survived, let's say. Yeah. So let's but do group by. Yeah. Or are you suggesting it's something? Mostly else? a demo, like look at the shiny stuff that pandas can okay. do for us, yeah. right? See how easy this is. We're, we're not so, going to go deeply now in how this works, but. Survived is one of the column names now. Yeah. So we're taking all the different values of survived and Creating for, okay, this is a generic object. It's, yeah, okay, yes. printing it doesn't um, tell you a lot. But then we can take the age column from that. Yeah. Does printing this do anything? No, a syntax error at the moment because you forgot a code. Oh, okay. a code but... Yes. Yeah. Uh, it's still kind oh, of it's... Um, series group. I mean, you it's can lazy. It, turn it, it into something that actually is printable, but it hasn't actually done the operation yet. It needs to know what to but do. But now we are asking for it for a number, the mean. So we have taken the passengers who have survived, um, or we have rather grouped them by whether they have survived or not. So we have two groups, survived and not survived. Yeah. And we have taken the age column only and are calculating the mean of that column. So let's exactly. see. So it, it does a lot of work in a single line. So again, don't worry yet about exactly how each of these functions works. So this is now the demo to show, okay, what kind of stuff can you do with pandas? So you can quickly compute this. And this is not exactly what I was expecting. Um, hmm. The average ages no. are very close to each other. That's true. So the, the old adage, women and children first. Well, well, well I guess all people more children survived. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. Can, you, can you? Yeah. So let's do the do the second one. So let's let's plot the entire age distribution. Okay. Maybe you can just copy paste this one. Um, okay, we well, we could. Um, hist for histogram. Um, so pandas also comes with some uh, if plotting. If I do files. this, will it add a line break and break the flow of the code? No, it's not. Let's see. Okay, well, mm -hmm. it did it wrong. Oh, yeah. So pandas comes That's with better. a few plotting functions as well. There are Tomorrow, we will look deeper into the plotting functionality of pandas and, and a companion library called Seaborn, which 
provides much more visualization functions. Okay, so we have two plots. So it has zero and one. Yes. So that's for survived, whether they survived or not. Yeah, if zero they means survived. they did not survive. And we're taking the age. Yeah. And then there's um, some details about the graph, basically. Yeah. But the important thing is, this is whether they survived. Well, whether they didn't survive is zero, survived is one. Um, and then and this so, is the age. Yeah. So did most of the children survive? Can you, can you scroll down? There's a lot more children that There's survived a lot more children there. than who didn't. But not all of them survived. No, some, uh, some children certainly didn't. Um, okay, but so this is a, a way to, to see how pandas can quickly allow you to, to just do some data queries, uh, answer these type of questions when you have a big table of just... Actually, I'm reading this wrong. So the first two columns are really the smallest children. And I, I guess, the, yeah, there is nobody here. So the smallest uh, ones did survive. Uh, well, one has yeah. survived, right? And the first bar is ages, I don't know, zero to five or something, no? Yeah, if this is zero to five, well, zero to three, yeah. all the children from zero to three survived. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. Oh, the, that could be, oh, that's good. Okay, good to know. Yeah. All right, but but let's it's let's nice. dial the deck a bit, uh, back a bit. Um, and let's, um, let's get into it. So how do we actually, how does this work? How does this data manipulation work? So, um, can you maybe go, go back to the data frame, to, to the table again? Um, okay, I'll okay, just yeah, find it I'll... again. All right. So, like I said, with, with, with Pandas data frames, we're, we're always looking at things in two dimensions. So we have rows and columns always, where the rows are the, the data points that we have, the observations that we have. And each column gives us some information about this data point. Um, and a data frame like this is really a collection of columns. And you, 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 can, you can see that by using the, the info method. Um, the info method of, of, of a data frame, so now of this Titanic object, it will show you some information of all the columns. So this is how Pandas really sees this data set. And it sees it as a collection of, I think, 12 columns here. Uh, and, yeah, 0 to 11. Yeah. And note that, that uh, even though we have different sort of data types, we have numbers and text in the column side by side, inside a single column, all the data is the same. So inside the column, there can only be either numbers or text or only items with the same data type. With either integer or floats or or strings, text is object in this case. So this could be NumPy arrays. Uh, These are in fact NumPy yeah. arrays. <laughs> it's it's a its column is stored as a NumPy array, but that's behind the scenes. Yeah. Um, so when we want to select data from this. Um, because most of the queries, most of the things, well, uh, common things you want to do, of course, the data is to select different type of things. Like we have been doing, we want to select only the people who survived or the people who did not survive and that sort of things. Um, let's first look at how to select a single column. Well, that's pretty easy because you can select it in the same way as you would select things from a Python dictionary. Okay, so that would be, well, that, the name of the column is a string. So yeah. I guess I put in a string. And we use, you used it here correctly, we use the square brackets. So square brackets in Python means select something out of a list or out of a dictionary or out of a NumPy array, square brackets. So also here we use square bra brackets to select something from this data frame. So now this is a certain column. Uh, now you only have the age column, yeah. yeah. Um, there, there is another way to select things which may be uh, useful to, to quickly show. If you don't want to type the square brackets and this uh, quotation marks and all this uh, all this stuff, there is a convenient shorthand. You can just write Titanic dot h. Yeah, so this is very sort of Pythonic um, way of doing things. So it's a very lazy way of doing things. Yeah. But when you're when you're exploring data on the on the terminal and you're just like typing out commands, this is sometimes really useful to just quickly select something. Okay. Well, that's a com uh, that, uh, That's a column. Now the big question, how do we select rows? 
Okay, so um, should I just write try the name of the column? No, actually. Well, there are. They don't really have if, names. If you, saw, at the if you saw the table again, if you saw the, the data frame, yeah, the thing, and there's there's something um, I must tell you about this first. So all the columns have a name assigned to them. Yeah, that's much as it's obvious. All the columns are named, but actually in pandas, um, also the rows have numbers. Of uh, uh, the rows, uh, well, they have numbers. The rows have names. That's what I'm trying to get at. Um, but the names at the moment are zero and one and two. So that that's a little bit uh, not obvious that they're yeah. actually names assigned. So we to didn't tell pandas to assign any specific names. So it's just assigned zero, one, two, exactly. and so on. So we, uh, I think it will be more clear if we assign something else to the row name. So set, uh, yeah, shall we okay. set the, the name of the passenger and use that? Um, so what was the function to do that? I could it's, check it, but can uh, you remind set me? Set underscore index. Set index. Yes. Okay. And it's called set index because these row names, they are referred to in pandas as the index. We are indexing by name. If you know something about databases, um, and for example, SQL databases, then, then the term index may mean something to you. It's a, well, something that you look up rows by. Um, but in any case, it's the names of the rows. They are called the index. So this line will use the, uh, the names of the passengers as the, the name column, so the name of the passenger. Yeah. So I'm guessing it's very important here. Oh, it didn't print, any, print anything. No, you um, So if the there are two people with the same name, this would not work correctly. Um, this would, would actually work. So the, the, the row names do not necessarily need to be unique. Oh, okay. Um, the column names also, uh, I think, do not need to be unique. Um, it will be very confusing. So it's, I think it's good practice um, to be very much aware, do I have duplicate data here? Um, but it, uh, no, they, they don't need to be, but it's very convenient if they are. So, mm. um, so now it's more, more obvious, right? That, that rows have names because yeah. now they, they actually do have names. Okay. So now to get back to the questions, how do I select rows? Um, well, we can do it in two ways. We can select rows by their number. Well, give me okay. row number 15, or we can select it by their name. And maybe that's even more intuitive. Um, so yeah, here in the lecture notes, if you see now below at the screen, there, there are many different ways to select um, data, select rows. For example, we can, uh, we, we can select a, a row and a column together by their names. Um, so maybe, maybe do that. So, so we see how old is... Uh, Titanic dot, um, so I want a row and a column. Mm. Yeah. Okay, well, the um, at should do it. Yes. So let's take plum. So this is the so name of the, the row. downside of using the names. Uh, it is very clear that they are now names, but it is the, the downside is that they are, take a while to type. That's true. And I might make spelling mistakes. So yeah, I'm taking the age of Mr. Ali Lam. Yeah, no column. Uh... Uh, that is none. So it's not set, I guess. Um, let's uh, see, I saw there is a... Can we try someone, uh, someone else? Heikinen Miss Lina. Is there a dot after Miss? Yes. Uh -huh. And is it MSS or just... It's the whole thing. Ah, so, which means go. it's not Miss, it's Mrs. Okay, okay. so it's it set to 26. That's good. So now we can query single passengers. So. If we want to, so, so that's the at localizer. Also note that, that it's, I call it a localizer, not a function, because see, we don't use round brackets here. We're still using square brackets. It, it uses a bit of Python magic to, yeah. To, uh, yeah, to, to be able to index this, this object in various ways. So it's kind of as if this at was an array or yeah. something like an array. Yes. Um, so let's let's take a look at the other. So say we want all the information of Miss uh, Lina Heikinen. Okay. Was she Finnish? But um, yeah, that's why I chose the name. I can spell okay. it. <laughs> um, so let, let's use, for example, the, the lock one. Uh, the okay. lock will give you um, a row of data. Um, 
You could just do by name. So, so for log, um, do I need the colon as in the? No, oh, no that's a slice syntax. Sorry, no, let's not do that. Um, so let's just. You just give it the name of a row. Yeah. Okay. So now we get all the information about this liner. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So 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 that's by name. Um, and we can also do it by number. For example, um, what if we want um, rows uh, five to ten, say? Okay. So now we don't use lock because lock is with by by name. We use i lock, which means do it so by index. Number. Oh, i is for index, I guess. You are right. Yeah. Although the name is also called index, so maybe that is not. Yeah. It does not clarify okay. as much as I was thinking it would. <laughs> So that would be the um, first five rows. Yeah. yeah, this is easier to remember um, when you remember that it's for index. So yeah. this is the first five rows. So here you could do all kinds of clever things. So if you want, for example, row. Actually the first six. Yeah, row like three, five and six or something. You can uh, also yeah. select with a list. So this is much like, like how you would six. slice a number. Well, it needs oh. to be a list. Yeah, this is very much how you would uh, slice a, a NumPy object. True. Okay. I will give it a list. All right. Yeah. So that will. Uh... So two ways to do these things. Um, okay, and um, now we, we we get to a super useful thing. So now that we can select rows, I think what we want to do is we want to select rows based on some condition. So say we want all the people that are older than seventy. Okay, so the syntax for selecting is the same, but we want something in here that's somewhat different. Yeah. Um, actually, did we do this in NumPy? I think we did. I think in NumPy we might also do this. So, so maybe we first... can do this in NumPy. Yeah. So yeah, let's let's do what's inside first. Yeah. So so can you select? Um, so I select oh, the maybe say that, that the age must be larger than seventy. Yeah. So that's what this looks like. It takes the, um, now you see the names because that is the, the index is the name of, of the row. That's the name, the name of the entry. But then the value is either true or false. It's mostly false here because yes, most people- Whether their corresponding value is in the age column is uh, higher than 70, yeah. And if I do 30, we'll probably see some more. Yeah, there's some yeah. true values as well. But let's go back to 70. All right, so this is um, so this now we can use as a mask that like we did with the numpy arrays at the end of the numpy uh, uh, session. Yeah, so we can plug this into yeah. the selector syntax into the square brackets. Yes. And now so. we get the whole row for people who are older than seventy. Yeah. Uh, the age is here. Okay. Yes. So now you've you've used the generic square brackets, which are kind of magic. You could also use the i lock. Loc uh, locator for this, uh, selector for this. So if you have titanic dot I lock, I think that should also work. And then square brackets. Mm, okay, the space is there. I think okay. it doesn't. No, ah, okay, maybe something. that doesn't work. It really needs numbers. Okay. Or lock. Oh, lock, lock does work. Okay. Because this was by name. So if we take oh, just yeah. this, this is kind of weird. <laughs> if we take just this, it has name yeah. and true or false. So lock takes names. Yes. Okay. And that's what it wants. Um, so it's, but at least lock specifies like I, we're interested in rows. We want rows. Um, yeah. For which this is true. Um, which may be sometimes a bit more clear than just using square brackets because the, the if you just use square brackets, pandas will try its best to figure out what you want. And um, so they're, they're very powerful, um, but can also be a bit confusing when you do more complicated things with them. Okay, so we get queries like this. Okay, so now if all the people are 70s, um, could we, um, well, let's try one more before we go. Actually, we should go to the exercise, I think. So you've now seen a bit how to, how to load data. Um, you've seen how to select columns. Um, you've seen how to select rows and rows based on some value for column. So all the people above 70, for example. So let's go to a quick exercise where you can try this 
yourself. And let's maybe take uh, 10 minutes for this. You can find the exercise this. here in the, in the lecture notes. Um, so, so load some data, maybe have a, a look at the API, API reference for pandas and, or, or use the autocomplete feature to see what kinds of methods are available to you. You've already seen that we have a method called mean to compute the mean of values, um, but there are many, many others. Um, and if you can, so try to compute the mean age of the first 10 passengers. So then you first need to slice by row, take 10 passengers, and then use mean to compute the mean age of them. See if you can do that. Um, then if you have time left, we will take 10 minutes for this. You can uh, compute, for example, the survival rate um, among passengers over and under the average rate. So you can do a bit more complex queries um, on this data. Okay. So yeah, we'll be back. All right. uh, there it is. Yeah. 47 passed or 13 too. And let's uh, let's pick up uh, then. Yeah. All right. Good luck. Let's see. We have some.
everyone. Um, I hope you've managed to play a little with pandas, get the data inside and, and look around a little bit. Um, let's talk now a little bit um, about a section that's called tidy data. And this really is about a convention. So if you want to use the full power of pandas, you should organize your data a little bit in, in a way that fits nicely with this row and column uh, structure of pandas. Um, and the mo most important thing about this is that in a tidy data set that each variable in your data is its own column. So when we have a, pasture, a passenger of the Titanic, um, that we have one row is a passenger and every variable, everything we know about this passenger is called a variable and is in one of the columns. So let's take Let's take a look at some data that, that is not organized like that and if we and see if we can reorganize it to be in this tidy data form. That may be the best way to, to explain it. So, um, Jarno, can you execute that bit of code that is in there? Yes. Um, so this bit of code will create a new data frame. Um, tomorrow we will get more into how do you actually create data frames um, from scratch. Um, but if you want to sneak peek, this is how we do it. Okay. This creates a data frame, but it's not tidy. Um, so this is some data about uh, three runners who were running a race. And uh, there also was a, a person with a stopwatch next to the track. And it timed the runners as they ran 400 meters. And then when they've run 800 meters, 1200 meters, 1500 meters, they took the time, they written them down. Um, and this is now the, the data that we have. Uh, and you see that 400, 800, 1200, 1500, those are now the names of our columns. Um, what makes this data non-tidy is that these column names, they actually are the values of a variable. We have a variable, uh, variable called distance, the distance that a runner uh, ran. Um, and this distance is either 400, 800, 1200, 1500. So let's reformat the data such that we really have, we have the runner uh, as a column, we have the distance that they ran as a column, and we have the time um, in which they ran that distance as a, as a column. And so this is, and this is the natural way that people will probably write this data, it, um, but it is less machine readable than, yes. um, it, it's not as good for pandas or for no, most of the programs. No, it will, it, will, it will start to limit us when we want to do um, uh, certain queries. So because distance is not explicitly a variable here, it's just encoded in the column names, it becomes more tricky to do queries based on the distance. So say we want uh, all the runners that, um, or we want the mean time uh, that the runners took to run, I don't know, 500 to 900 meters or something. Those, those kinds of queries that involve distance or we want to plot time versus distance, for example, or that sort of thing. Yeah. It's so let's make a distances. variable called distance, sorry. Um, Go ahead. Um, yeah, in, in the teaching materials, okay. we now use one of Panda's many, many uh, data mangling functions. Um, okay. Also with this one, uh, we, let's not get into the specifics of this one. So yeah. I recommend everyone read the documentation. There are so many ways to mangle the data. It will take weeks to sum them all up and go over all of them in depth. Just know that there are many. Um, so if there's something you want to do with the data, chances are very good there's a specific method that will do that for you. And you can find it in the documentation. So to use pandas I'm is really, you, you have your data on one hand and you have the pandas uh, documentation in the other hand. And this is how you use pandas. You always use in the documentation. Yeah. But here I'm choosing, um, I'm just choosing that the, the value uh, runners will stay as it is. And I want to turn these values 400, 800, 1,500 into yeah. a new variable called uh, distance, I guess. Distance. Yeah. Yes. And, and, and then what we do, yeah, what should happen? I need to give, values? so there is a, um, oh, I put some par unnecessary parentheses there. Um, so there is a name for the column I create, but I also need a name for the row. Yeah, well, the, the column, this, this I... column distance, this is where the numbers 400, 800, 1200, 1500 will go. 
Okay. Well, but we also need a place to where where all these values, other values, go. Um, what's let's that? call the bottom um, key error runners. Oh, there's no column called runners with a capital. No, because it's, it's just runner. runner. Ah, okay. Singular. Yes. Okay. Ah, this um, so it's probably clearer uh, what this does after I actually run it, right? So runner um, remains, runner one, mm -hmm. runner one again, and so on. But then these numbers become the values of this distance column. Yeah. So now and then the values of these columns become the values of the time column. Yeah. So for example, if you now want runner two at 800 meters, right? That's now a separate row. Runner two at 800 meters, ran it in 160 seconds. This is the same data. It's another way of looking at it. But now distance is a column of its own. So note that, that we want each column to be a variable. However, it's not necessary that each row is an individual runner. Right? We have runner one. We have, we have three rows corresponding now that tells us something about runner number one. Um, so in, in, the, in the tidy data format, uh, each column is a separate variable, but each row does not have to be a specific runner or passenger of the Titanic or something anymore. So this is a bit more a uh, bit easier now. Um, so um, okay. Start let's from the beginning. What I was typing. Yeah, let's wrap let's wrap this up. So yeah. what, what do you want to do, uh, Jarn? Let's let's do some query with the with the distance, just to show how this now works. Okay, one one. And I think you need parentheses, right? Hmm. And let's say df will take the distance. And go fancy. And now we let's see, we take all the data for runner one. Um and now distance. Say distance is bigger than eight hundred. Yeah. Let's see if this works. That should work. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But Are you um yeah, that's that's, yeah. that's that's one query. Um, we can, I guess the point was that we don't need to specify the runner. So oh, yeah, there's a parenthesis missing. Yes. Oh, actually an extra one. Yeah. Yeah. And you can quickly do things like that. Yeah. Or, uh, and was, uh, yeah, so now if you want, uh, you can put the mean of that and that, that sort of things. So especially um, uh, tomorrow we will look at plotting. Um, so now if you want to, well, maybe you can quickly do it here. Um, let's make a quick line plot um, uh, for the, um, I don't think we have it here right now. No. Okay. We, we yeah. may be able to improvise this. Plot uh, time versus distance, for example. So let's make a plot where on the x axis we have time and on the y axis we have distance. Um, so is it pd? No, plot. it's df.plot. df.plot. And then you give it two parameters and let's name them. So we do x equals um, what we want on the distance. axis, maybe distance. Uh, and, and y, for example, time. y equals, um, now the x and y are the x and y um, axis of the plot. Of the plot, yeah. And time is with a lower case t. Time, yes. There we go. This and is there we are. Yeah. Now there's four runners at each time. so. Yeah. It looks a little bit weird as a time as a line plot. But yeah, we, we, could, we can probably group them by. We can probably give the, the runners different colors. But now I would have to look at the documentation. So probably it's color equals runner or something. But I'm not quite sure. Okay. <laughs> I mean, we don't have to do that. No, that it's not. That was not it. Of course, it wasn't. But um, yeah. See, now I, now I would also have to go to the documentation. So how do I Yeah, start? um there's much more than you can remember off the top of your But head. these sort of things would be always use more it. complicated. Uh, so so these things are easier when all the variables are neatly like uh, one column is a single variable and we don't have uh, um we, we, we don't have uh, weird column names that are that are numbers. That's the main point of tidy data. Okay, so now you know a little bit, a little bit about pandas, how data should be in there, um, and how we do simple queries of that. Um, so that's that's it for uh, today's lesson on pandas. Uh, tomorrow we will pick up with more complicated queries and uh, a lot more about plotting. Uh, but for now, this is it.
Thank you, Jarno, for your assistance. All right. Thank you. Does anybody know in yeah. the, of, of the yeah, teaching how, how to plot runner as a color? <laughs> <laughs> Is there a preferred way to specify both rows and columns? I think you would do that with the with the lock. So maybe go. So we, we talked so, about the, the lock selector a little bit. Um, and, and there we said, OK, you can use the lock to select rows. But actually, a lock can also take two uh, selectors, and you can get both rows and columns in lock. Mm -hmm. Oh, you managed to do it. Okay. Yeah. Um, so that was the question mm -hmm. was to. Okay. So what if we want both? Specific row, row and specific column, right? Yeah. Oh, do, do we, did we know? Do you still remember the name? Nope. <laughs> <There's the button. laughs> Maybe take take one. So uh, this is actually exactly the line I was starting to type. So if I want yeah. the row of Haken and Miss Lina, yeah. and um, the column age, um, I use the dot lock and then give yeah. um, well both of the values first the oh. row and then the column. Yeah, you you can, these can also be slices by the way. So you can take all the the rows from uh, from Lina all the way to Mister Lin or something. So. so Beginning to liner. Oh yeah, yeah. Everything That's until it. liner. Yeah. And from age forward. Yeah, all the age to the rest, right? But I mean, in this particular database, the things aren't really that ordered. So I'm not sure if this makes sense. Um, no, it, can't do it will make more sense if we would sort them by sort them by name first. Of course, right? Uh, Pandas have many stuff to sort the data in many different ways, as you can imagine. The easiest way to get the um, different plots for different runners was to use group by ah. before calling the plot. And I don't actually need to have this time here. That was unnecessary. Oh, that's. Uh, oh, uh, well, maybe it was. No, more. now it's. Now it made oh. more. Okay, it made three plots. That is an interesting reaction. <laughs> <laughs> Why did it do that? Okay. Yeah, so now we have the times. Which one was yeah. fast? First one. Anything okay. else? Okay. Um, any other burning questions, or shall we leave it for today? Maybe we all deserve to take a long break and 